Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is Stochoed, and, uh, what happens when you go nocturnal? <coughs> Basically, starting a new schedule, starting a new schedule to see what it's like, where I go to bed at 7.30 and wake up at 2.30, um, and do all of my work at nighttime, okay? So, what happens when you go nocturnal? We're going to be talking about that later because I just started this. As you can tell, I'm kind of delirious and I'm having visual hallucinations because of it. Well, here's the deal. I forgot what I'm making a video about. Okay? I'm going to put this right here. Essentially, a single moment, a single split second of actual true focus can overpower 17 hours of broken focus. When you meditate, you're meditating on a, a focus. Whether your focus is on your heartbeat or your breathing or whatever, that's not powerful. That's not really where the feeling is. Because you're not feeling in that. Your mind will always be distracted by all these other things. Your mind will be pulled away onto all these other things. And they call that the monkey brain, but that never dies. Your brain will never be totally focused like that. And it doesn't need to be. Because that's not how you solve problems. Turning off your mind is not how you figure out things. <clears throat> but turning off your mind is how you accept things. How do you accept things? Well, if energy can neither be created nor destroyed, and the double slit experiment proves that consciousness is energy, guess what? We don't create this. It's attracted. Now, hang on. Whatever vibrations their brains are resonated to Bluetooth connect with is what we perceive as their consciousness. We, c we attract that energy. It's just floating around. Our consciousness is not solid. It's something that exists as something which does not exist okay and essentially if you can focus on what you actually want for just that amount of time then you have the same amount of power as if you can break focus for 17 hours because meditating is not the really the right way to focus by forcing your mind to do something that it does not do naturally so today I'm going to be sharing with you the snap method okay the snap method of manifestation now you may know if you're on this channel I practice time travel, and I can time travel. Not only can I time travel, I can jump to parallel timelines, parallel universes. Now, here's the thing. Manifestation and timeline jumping and time travel are all the same thing. Now, this does not mean that I'm using multiple words to refer to the same concept, but rather that all of these concepts are wrapped around using the same tool metaphysically, okay? So essentially, I'm saying that when you jump to a parallel universe, you're affecting the way that time is organized. When you time travel backwards, you're affecting the way that time is organized. And when you manifest something into existence, you're manifesting something into existence in the future or in the present, you're changing the way that time is organized. Changing your timeline, okay? Changing your probability. Well, the snap method is basically like this. Now, in Kuji-in, which is Japanese magic hand science, your thumb is fire, your index is air, your middle finger is ether, or spirit, or in other words, God, your ring finger is earth, and your pinky is water. Now, this isn't actually specifically in Kuji-in, but in Reiki, okay? Now, what we're going to do, you're going to take your middle finger and your uh, thumb, okay? Now, what this is, is this is God, and this is focus. This is fire, passion, fury, drive, and getting shit done. So, these two fingers together, this is how we snap. If you can't snap, that's fine. But now, the secret in this snap method is that right as you're building up this energy, look at this. First, before you snap, you build potential energy in your hand. It builds up potential before going kinetic. Potential goes kinetic, where does the kinetic energy go? It gets absorbed into the hand, creating a kinetic shockwave throughout the rest of the body. And it dissipates. What does it dissipate to? What does it turn into? It turns into many different types of energy, but most, most importantly, it turns into ethereal energy. Snap. 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 The deal is that the intention, the potential, right before the snap, is actually where the consciousness takes place. You're setting an intention by snapping. Hold the snap there. Think about what you want to happen. You want a light to turn green? It's going to turn green before the snap. Because this is a tool for allowing you to set an intention.
for allowing you to make your mind move. It, it allows you to use your mind as a muscle rather than a computer. Okay, build the intention, and you've built it. <laughs> okay, and so that's how you do it. That's the snap method. That's the snap method of manifestation. How would you use the snap method for time travel? Well, I have a lot of videos about time travel, and I have uh, T U G T T T. I have T I have T U G T T, the ultimate guide to time travel, and uh, which is a playlist. You can check that out. I'm gonna add more videos to it soon. I haven't made a video in like five days because I've been super busy. <clears throat> But yeah, this is a snap method, guys. Build the intention, and it happens. Now, this works, okay? I'm not even gonna, like, just actually try it yourself. Snapping is a magic thing, okay? And yeah. <laughs>